Hi guys and welcome to Total Technic. Today we're working on the Audi Q7. This is the 4L model and what we'll be doing in this video is going to be showing you how to do a complete brake pad and brake disc change. So let's crack on. So first thing we need to do is take a look at removing the rear wheels. Now on the Audi Q7 here, uh, one very important thing to uh, point out is that uh, some Q7s have air suspension, others don't. Now if your particular one does have air suspension, uh, it actually has a jacking mode and what that will do is it will actually lock that air suspension so that when you lift the, uh, the car up it's not trying to uh, constantly readjust and that can be accessed by the onboard computer, the MMI system. So next you want to grab yourself uh, a breaker bar and the correct size uh, socket and uh, we're going to get these slackened off. When you slacken these off, you probably want to do them maximum half a turn. So next you're going to jack up the corner of the car that you need to work on. Now, it's always a good idea when you're uh, jacking up your car uh, to place some blocks, some uh, pieces of wood, a couple of bricks, something like that, under the front wheels of the car, especially if you have a manual transmission. Another thing to point out quickly is at this stage your, uh, your handbrake uh, should be disengaged. So be careful when you remove your last wheel bolt because depending on uh, how stuck onto the hub the wheel is, uh, the wheel could come loose uh, at this stage. Just be, uh, be prepared for that. A bit of a wobble just to move it off the hub. Then we've still got it nice and low so we haven't clattered the uh, top inside of our wheel. So we just slide that directly sideways and we can roll that out of the way. Okay, so one of the uh, key things that tends to get stuck in these is this uh, little pin that goes across the uh, center right here. We're going to be knocking this uh, out uh, later in the video, but to uh, make this a little bit easier, especially if yours has got a little bit of corrosion or dirt build up on it, what we're going to do is just um, give it a tiny bit of a clean up and then what, well, what we'll do then is put a little bit of a penetration um, fluid on it, uh, things like uh, plus gas, liquid wrench, uh, all those kind of products, so whatever you've got handy, and just help to soak these in to hopefully make it a little bit easy easier for us to get this out uh, in a short while. So to help us clean this up you see we've got quite a build up of uh, dirt just where the um, pin passes through uh, this kind of metal part of the carpet right here so I'm just going to uh, give that a bit of a scrape just around the uh, edges with the hook tool and start getting rid of some of this uh, this build up of gunk. There's no point putting the air penetration fluid on the top of it because obviously that's just an extra layer of stuff that's got to try and get through to actually get into the uh, into the joint. So I'm just going to spend a couple of minutes giving that a bit of a clean up, removing the uh, the worst of the uh, build up. And we'll just do the same quickly uh, on the opposite side uh, as well. So exactly the same, just give it a bit of a clean up. Every bit you can get off is going to help the removal process. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to grab a penetration fluid. We're using plus gas uh, this time, uh, but products like Liquid Wrench and um, all those other brands, there's hundreds of them out there. Uh, these help quite a lot. So what I'm going to do, just give it a bit of a soak where the joints are and also where this pin passes through the uh, pads. I'll give it a little bit on there as well. And of course this opposite side here. And if you can give that about 10 minutes to soak in, what that will do is that will work its way into those joints and just help to uh, ease it up a little bit uh, as we go. And what we'll do whilst we've got the uh, the dismantling fluid is we will just go to our uh, upper and lower uh, caliper bolts and just put a little bit on those as well. So that's the lower one and I'll do exactly the same on the top. So if you look on the uh, rear of the uh, caliper you've got the um, brake uh, cable, this is the wear sensor cable, comes into a little electrical connector just there and we need to get this disconnected. These can be quite tricky to uh, get off because the end that you're trying to remove is actually within this little metal uh, bracket so they can be a little bit uh, a little bit sticky. So my preferred method on these is to get a hook tool. You, you can reach in, grab that uh, little tab on the back, pull that downward and then try and wiggle it off by hand. But sometimes if there's dirt and stuff in there, it won't uh, disconnect easily by hand. Uh, you can put a screwdriver in and open it up, as long as you're careful. Uh, but the other way of doing it is to come into the front and just to lift the uh, 
it's like a little flap in there I'll show it to you in a minute so you put your hook tool in get it under the edge of the flap and just lift the flap up and then you can start to wobble it loose yeah he's come there he goes so I'll just show you uh, show you on the plug there uh, so hopefully you can see okay there's a, a little uh, little flap just there lifts up and down and that's what locks it into place so what you do is you put the hook tool in and you can kind of feel it when you get it underneath and just twist it a little bit that'll lift it up like so and then wobble the start to wobble the uh, thing and pull it backwards and it'll pop off okay so now we're on this uh, brake uh, wear cable just popping out of this little uh, slot in there and we also got to unhook it from the bottom of this uh, spring right here So our next stage is going to be to remove this little pin, you can just see the head of it that passes through uh, this kind of main pin that goes uh, horizontally across the centre here. So we've got to pull this out to be able to uh, then uh, slide the pin out, this stops the pin from sliding out accidentally uh, during day to day use. Uh, this one's going to be pretty well stuck in so we're going to have to fight a little bit with this, uh, hopefully yours won't be quite as difficult as this but I'll give you a couple of tips just in case yours is a little bit sticky. Okay, so if yours is sticky as this one is, believe it or not, the easiest way is to actually give it a tap. So what you want to try and do is break the um, kind of all the dirt and grime that's, that's built up and solidified there. So if you give it a light tap on the end, yeah, I could see that coming off then, and it's moving. It's actually moved in a tiny bit, so that's perfect. That's a good starting point. Now I can grab my hook tool. I'm going to use it on the uh, tip of the metal here, just as a lever. Yeah, this one's coming now. And just push that forward. Get that to a point. So we know that's now going to come out. So I'll grab some pliers and get that removed. And that's what the little uh, pin looks like. So it kind of sits, uh, the pin sits in this little circular section in, in the middle. So it passes through and clicks into place through there. So we're going to be uh, trying to attack this um, this pin by uh, tapping it out uh, next. Uh, but there's a quick tip for you. Again, if yours has got a bit of corrosion and a bit of uh, gunk solidified on it, there's a quick tip that we can do that will make this process hopefully a tiny bit easier. Now what you're going to need is a, a punch tool. And this is uh, what you're also going to need to do the uh, punch the pin out in a, in a couple of minutes time. And what you'll find is that the um, this little uh, spring right here is kind of uh, looks like a H turned on its side. This spring here, uh, there'll be almost no movement between the spring and this pin, so that's going to be an extra little uh, point of resistance. That's uh, so what we can do to get around this: is just give it a quick tap um, with your uh, with your punch. Yeah, so now you can see I can actually move it, whereas it wouldn't move at all before. Now because this one's particularly gunky, I'm just going to give it a bit of a clean off in the centre as well. Now they're not always this bad, this is a particularly bad one. And remember every little bit of dirt that I'm scraping off here is going to be a point of resistance when it comes to passing it through the, uh, through the pad and through the end there as well. So the smoother you can get it, obviously you can't see all of it because half of it's under the air springs. So as much as you can get is certainly going to help. And also because this is a particularly bad one, and we haven't tried it yet, but I'm, I'm uh, assuming the worst, I'm going to give this a little bit of uh, penetration fluid as well, just to help us uh, all we can. Now you want to make sure that the punch tool that you choose, the diameter of the actual uh, end of the punch tool is smaller than the uh, diameter of the pin that you're trying to remove. Obviously if you get something that's bigger it's never going to go through the hole so you need to make sure it sits a lot, a lot well not a lot smaller but uh, small enough that it will definitely pass through the hole so you know a considerable amount smaller. And just for reference the one that I'm using today is a six millimeter and also if you've got a long one that's going to help the process a heck of a lot. And also for the sake of safety please make sure that you wear goggles when you do this and ear protection is also a good idea as well. If 
yours is really stubborn, uh, as this one is, all you've got to do is just keep repeating the process of trying to uh, clean it up as best as you can. Eventually it will go. But you need to get as much of this crud out as you can. As I said, hopefully yours won't have been as on as long as these clearly have, so yours will hopefully be a lot easier than our one. So we're looking at pretty much worst case scenario. The other thing you can do is just give the, t the uh, pads themselves a bit of a tap. Again, just to try and break any seals, just to try and loosen, loosen it up if it's very stubborn. Yeah, so here's our pin. There's a good example there of just how much gunk and rubbish have built up uh, on this. Uh, so I say they they can be a little bit tricky as this one this one was, uh, but the key to it is just to get rid of as much of the uh, build up of crap from around the uh, sides as you can. Uh, try and scrape off as much as you can. Keep putting the penetration fluid in there because that will soak in and, and aid the uh, aid the process. And uh, just keep at it. It will come uh, eventually. So next, a removal of the uh, little spring here, it just lifts out. You've kind of got to manipulate it a little bit. Just so that you can get the uh, one corner past this little uh, hooked over wire. So that's removed. So next we're going to look at removing the old pads. Okay, so just a quick note with regards to the uh, pushing back of these pistons, rewinding these calipers. Uh, the Audi Workshop manual always recommends that you draw off a little bit of fluid from the brake, brake fluid uh, reservoir uh, under your uh, bonnet or hood. Uh, the reason being is if you've ever topped it up, uh, topped that brake fluid up between uh, changes, then when you uh, force, that, um, force that piston back, it's going to force, potentially force the brake fluid up and it will have an overflow on your reservoir and you don't want that stuff dripping through your car. So that's how the Audi Workshop Manu tells you to do it, draw a little bit of fluid off. If you're happy that the uh, fluid's not kind of over full and you think you've got space to push it back, you can just push it back quite safely, no problem at all. Now the other way of doing it is what you can actually do is uh, attach a line to the uh, nipple on the caliper itself and then uh, open the nipple, push the uh, pad back, that will force the uh, brake fluid up, um, out through the line, not back into the uh, brake system of the car, it will come out of your line into your collection bottle and you can kind of bleed it, bleed it that way and then just be sure to lock them off before any air goes back up the line. And that also ensures that any old kind of dirty fluid that's in the caliper doesn't go back up into the car, you're actually getting rid of it. So that's quite a nice way of doing it uh, as well. Uh, but it's completely optional, so you've got various different ways uh, that you can do it. Uh, but you should always bear in mind that there is a possibility that when you uh, push these back, uh, if your uh, brake fluid reservoir is very full, that it could overflow. Uh, so if you're worried about, worried about that, check the level of it and put a good amount of blue paper all around it in case you do get any potential spills. But these things are designed to be um, rewound uh, without it being a problem. It'll only really be a problem if you've topped up the levels. So those are the kind of various options when it comes to uh, pushing these uh, pistons back of you know, what's going to happen with that brake fluid. So you've got several different options that you can uh, go with. You can go with the Audi Workshop Way, draw it off or you can uh, crack off the nipples and take it out that way uh, whatever you like uh, just just make sure that you use the method that you're happiest with and uh, double check your uh, brake fluid reservoir level before you do anything so to remove the old pads uh, obviously the old pads are a lot thinner than the brand new pads will be that are going to be going back in uh, so to remove the pads we don't need to fully rewind the uh, pistons uh, in the uh, caliper we can rewind them just a little bit to enable us to uh, remove the pads uh, the advantage of that is uh, if you can uh, pull these back just a little bit 
you move these out of the way then you can actually have a look at the condition of the uh, whatever's visible on the piston and also the rubber seals whilst they're expanded you can have a good look around and check that everything is uh, good and you're happy with everything and then you can look at fully rewinding them so for the time being we're going to rewind them a little bit just enough to slide them out okay now a good easy way to uh, get these out is just grab yourself a large flat headed screwdriver the disc in the middle is vented so obviously it's got uh, holes uh, in the middle of it so what you can do is just put it into the uh, um, into the slot there on the disc and push it on these little uh, top roller sections just here so put it in a little, a little bit of light pressure there and then repeat you can already see this one's almost ready to come out same on the bottom there put it in a slot and pull it back just here again not too much see that one's pretty much ready and then obviously we do the same on the opposite side just here for the other pad they're pretty much there and if you need to wobble them uh, obviously we're going to wobble them uh, upward and downward in this direction if they're sticking um, as in the backs of the pads are sticking you can also wobble them that way a little bit that'll open up the piston just that tiny bit more see that one's sticking so give it that way and there it comes there okay so they're ready to come out so let's get these removed Here are the, uh, the old pads. You can see very, uh, very badly worn. This one far less worn than this one, uh, but both completely worn. So it's a quick uh, notice on the uh, on your pads. Uh, the cable, the wear uh, sensor cable. Uh, if yours hasn't worn through, i.e. If the, if the light on your dashboard has not come on, then you can actually reuse these. Uh, you can uh, just pull them uh, pull them out. But as you can see on this one, this bottom one, it doesn't appear to have uh, cut through. But on this top one here, you can see it's cut through and you can actually see the uh, metal of the connector there. So that would be what would have uh, triggered the, um, the light on the, uh, on the dashboard. So these cannot be reused. We need uh, brand new cables in this instance. And so now is the perfect opportunity to uh, grab your torch, have a little look inside the uh, calipers, and in particular looking at the uh, the rubber seals, making sure that everything looks good and healthy on both sides. Uh, if you spot an issue, obviously now is the time to uh, to get it rectified. Uh, but this is a perfect opportunity before you fully rewind the uh, pistons to have a good look and make sure you're happy that everything looks fairly healthy in there. Okay, so I've had a look around and I'm, uh, I'm happy with those. So provided that they uh, all rewind okay, which they seem to when I did it by ha uh, with the screwdriver there, it looked like they were all going to rewind okay. Uh, these are good to go. So before we um, go any further, what we're going to do is fully uh, rewind these uh, pistons uh, back into the body of the caliper. Now there's a couple of ways that you can do this. Uh, one, if you've got one available, is to use a um, one of these uh, brake pad spreader tools is specifically for uh, pushing the pistons back so what you can do is get this to the uh, correct size to fit the gap I'll show you both ways fit it in between two pistons and then you can just start to expand it and as it expands it will start to uh, push the pistons back in and you should feel uh, when you're doing this that the resistance to push them back is not all that great and these are rewinding absolutely lovely so i've got no uh, no concerns on those so what i'll do is i'll stop doing that before they get fully rewound and i'll show you the uh, the way of doing this uh, same process without one of these tools so the workaround if you don't have one of the uh, tools available is to grab your uh, old pads slot them back in temporarily and remember the uh, one on the uh, inside would be the one with the uh, electrical connector those back in and then we'll continue the uh, the process the, that we started here yeah that's rewinding you can you can feel there's very little resistance there that re was rewinding really nicely same on that one I'll put that one back in upside down yeah got like no resistance to that so that's a sign of a good uh, a healthy piston and then what you'll find uh, because we've uh, spread them in this manner what we've done is we've actually moved the angle of that brake pad like that 
so the piston might not be fully um, uh, rewound at this stage so to get it fully rewound once you've done it in that direction you can then put it down between the disc and the front of the pad and do it in the opposite direction like so like so yeah yeah and then same here And then what you've done there, so to start with we pushed that out so that created it angled like that and then when we put it in and we pressed it from the bottom that straightened it all up, got it nice and flat. So those should now be fully rewound. So next we need to look at removing the caliper. The caliper is held on with two bolts. This is the lower one right here. As you can see it's one of these 12 point or spline bits that's going to be needed. We actually need quite a large one. So let's take a quick look at that in a bit more detail and then we can look at actually getting these bolts out. So this is the uh, set that we're using. Uh, this is one uh, you can get these on Amazon. I've had a link for you uh, below to either this kit or something very similar. Uh, so if you need one of these, you can go and uh, check that out. We'll find you the ones that have got the best prices and have those uh, relevant links for you. Uh, so what we need is the second biggest one in this set, which is actually an M16. And it's this 12 point. It doesn't need to be hollow. Uh, they're not all hollow. They just tend to make the larger sizes uh, hollow. It's not a security bit or anything like that. Uh, just uh, hollow I guess to save materials or, or whatever uh, but this is a, an M16 so it's quite a, a meaty one um, but uh, without these it's quite simply those bolts are not coming out so you need to grab yourself a spline size M16 okay it's always a good idea with these is to get your foot tool and give them a bit of a scrape hopefully you love that noise as much as, uh, as I do reminds me of a dentist the reason being if you've got any mud or crud uh, that's in there when you put the bit in uh, it won't fully insert and um, obviously with these sorts of bolts you do not want to round these off so you want to get that bit in as deep as you possibly can this one looks fairly clean but they can kind of get a bit of a mud or whatever in there just give them a bit of a clean up so we're going to pop the bit in now find it's probably going to be quite tight as this one is so to ensure that uh, we get that in as deep as we can because we do not want to round that bolt off I'm actually going to hit that in uh, with a lump hammer just to make sure that it gets all the way in as deep as we can into the head of that bolt when you're hitting it in you'll notice when it does go uh, fully inserted the noise changes goes from kind of a, a bit of a clack to a more of a, a, a solid um, thunk when you get into the end. There's no, nowhere more for it to go. So next you're going to grab your uh, wrench, get that attached on there, uh, or a breaker bar, and sometimes it can be on really, really tight. Uh, sometimes if you have to attack them from underneath, you can kind of use an extension bar and put your uh, uh, wrench up through the uh, hole in the suspension uh, frame here. Uh, we'll see how we do. These are on at 100 and, um, I think it's 180 newton meters. We'll confirm that later in the video. Uh, so they are pretty hard. So you've got 180 newton meters plus a buildup of um, uh, grime and heat, etc., over time. So yeah, for us as predicted. Uh, Quite a nasty uh, brake job this one because there's quite a lot of corrosion and stuff in there. That's very very hard to, uh, to get out. Had to move underneath the vehicle which I appreciate. It's not always possible for people watching at home. You're on jacks uh, rather than a lift. Uh, if you've got it obviously if you've got an air gun just put that on there. I'm trying to uh, demonstrate it all without using the air tools. And what you want to do is just pop it back in and give it a few twists because we still need to uh, remove the uh, second bolt. Then obviously you're going to repeat the process exactly the same uh, on your second bolt. Now on your uh, top bolt as we've got here you may well find you've got this uh, speed sensor cable uh, which is directly in the way. Uh, you can kind of just about pull it to one side uh, but if you need to uh, we can um, also get that removed so I'll show you quickly how to do that as well. So this cable's held in a little bracket and if you have a feel around of it the um, gap in the bracket is actually on the um, towards the center of the uh, 
the wheel hub if that makes any sense so it's not on the uh, the brake line side it's on the other side just in here is the little slot so what we need to do is just grab a tool and start uh, manipulating that sideways so just pop that out and that's going to give you the uh, space you need to get the bit in Now just carefully lift the uh, caliper off of the desk and of course you've still got all of your, uh, your brake line and everything, your flexi hose and everything is all still connected so you've got to be a little bit careful. And you've got to find a, a good solution, probably can do it there actually, just to, yeah, just want to mine that, that brake hose. You just want a good solution just to hold it in place uh, so that it doesn't drop or get damaged just while you're continuing to do the, uh, the work on the, uh, on the disc. So I'm just going to tie that up against there and that won't move. We're happy that that can't, can't fall off. So it's a quick look at the old disc uh, before we remove it. In particular, uh, these two little screw things. Obviously you've got your standard five holes for your wheel bolt. Then in addition, you've got this uh, Torx screw, which is quite large, just here. The purpose of that is to uh, hold the um, disc onto the hub once the uh, wheel bolt's removed to stop it falling off. That's the principal use of that one. The smaller one, just here, uh, the main purpose of this, this is actually for the um, uh, for the handbrake, the parking brake uh, system. Uh, these have um, inline shoes on the inside of this, uh, as we'll see when we get this assembly removed. And what this allows you to do actually allows you to uh, view through the disc and make adjustments to the uh, handbrake. We'll be covering that in a separate uh, video. We're going to be doing a full um, brake and shoe, um, sorry, brake shoe replacement uh, video for this particular uh, car uh, so we'll add a link for you below so if you also need to do your um, your handbrake shoes you can do that as well uh, but that's the main purpose for these two little bolts just here so this is actually a spline a little 12 point and it's a size 5 so make sure that's fully seated in there it shouldn't be too tight it's only uh, meant to be torqued to 14 millimeters uh, 14 newton meters to a point there it is yeah, if you get something that's a bit stubborn that's quite small like that and you're turning it it's turning the whole disc rather than keeping constant pressure on it just give it a bit of a tap and the shock can kind of uh, help loosen it off so this one needs to be removed because this uh, is going to be refitted into the, uh, the new disc uh, later in our process so we're just going to remove this second screw before we do that we need to ensure that everything's safe, we don't want this disc falling off. So we're just going to temporarily put a wheel bolt in place. So very importantly, before you try and remove the uh, brake disc from the car, is the handbrake obviously must be off. Uh, if it's not off, the handbrake shoes will be expanded and they'll be locking this uh, disc into place and you'll, you'll never get it off. Uh, as you can see, this one's not. This one's got movement, so we know that the handbrake is definitely uh, released and uh, we've double checked it as well. So when it comes to removing this, they can be quite stubborn uh, for two reasons. Uh, firstly, they can be stubborn just through kind of uh, age and dirt, and so they'll need a bit of a tap off. Um, that's that's quite common uh, regardless of what type of a uh, handbrake hand uh, parking brake setup you have um, on your uh, on your rear axle here and the second reason can be is that the uh, it's the actual handbrake shoes that are keeping it on if that makes any sense uh, so what we've got to try and do is loosen it off a little bit and see if it will just pass over those handbrake shoes because sometimes what you will have to do if you're um if you've still if you've definitely got your handbrake released but those handbrake shoes are still pressing on there with with um, with force uh, then you might have to manually uh, rewind the um the handbrake system to uh, reduce the size of that circle on the uh, brake shoes. But we'll show you how to do that process as we get a little bit further in. But I'm hoping if we give this a bit of a tap, this is just 
gauge that's holding this on. If I give this a few taps, as we turn around, the whole thing will just want to fall off and I can just slide it straight off. That's what I'm hoping. Okay, I've given it a few taps and we've got unlucky, as you can hear. We've got movement in that disc now. So it's uh, going to be the, um, uh, the handbrake shoes that are holding it off. So what we're going to do is a manual adjustment on the uh, handbrake shoes just to minimise the size of that circle to release the pressure on the inside of these uh, discs. It's probably due to a bit of uh, corrosion on the inside of these. We'll, we'll see when we, when, when we get it off. Uh, but regardless, we need to uh, release that pressure. Okay, so if you have to slacken this off, uh, we're going to show you the process. Uh, basically, um, what you're looking for is the there's an adjustment screw that sits between uh, a couple of the uh, handbrake shoes on one side depending on what side of the car you're on uh, it, it will be on um, opposing sides so the places that you want to look is at approximately either three o'clock if you imagine it's 12 o'clock there either at three o'clock through this little window uh, or if it's not there it's going to be at kind of nine o'clock on the uh, on the opposite side uh, depending on what side of the car you're working on so what you need to do is uh, turn your disc around using this little uh, hole to inspect. You're going to shine a torch through it. And what you're looking for is that, uh, that adjustment screw, which has almost like a little cog uh, around the side of it, little uh, slots in it. And then once you've found it and you've aligned yourself to it, I think it's going to be on this side. I haven't, I haven't put the torch in yet because uh, we're on the right hand side on, uh, at the moment. Uh, you're actually going to put that in once you can see that cog and then you're going to um, uh, adjust it to um, slacken it off and what you're going to do is reduce the, the, the gap between those uh, brake shoes is being forced open at the moment as you slacken it off the brake shoes will get slightly closer together and that should allow this uh, to come off that's what you're looking for is just to turn it around slowly checking around the three o'clock position it's not always exactly three o'clock it can be you know a few degrees uh, either either side if you can't see it there then have a look at the, uh, the nine o'clock position as well so I'm going to rotate this round find it and then slacken it off Another little confirmation for you uh, that we're definitely binding here, although the handbrake is off, is listen to this noise. That shouldn't be happening. So that's uh, again this, uh, this issue. So there's a good tip for you if you're unsure, because it can be a little bit confusing when you swap between um, sides of the car, which way you need to turn it. Try moving it one way, and if it locks one way, try moving this and this can barely move now, I can hardly move it at all. So that was the, um, that was the tightening. So obviously I'm now gonna do it the opposite way to uh, start loosening it off. And when you do this, you're looking to kind of grab one cog at a time. So we're getting looser now. Okay, so this is how far we've got. We've had uh, an absolute nightmare uh, with this particular uh, brake job. It's been really hard to get out and through the adjustment screw, we had a maximum of uh, seven clicks from being on full lock to uh, being what it considered fully released but seven's nowhere near enough really uh, but it just would not move uh, another inch so we've had to uh, kind of manhandle it a little bit and kind of wiggle it forward and even getting a little pry bar in here and just working it off of the uh, center be an absolute nightmare and I hate doing that because you don't want to damage uh, any of the um, uh, brake shoe components but sometimes you just literally got no choice this has been a particularly hard one so uh, we'll find out what's wrong with it uh, when we finally get this off So with your disc removed, uh, before you go any further, before you put that new disc in place, you want to make sure that you're happy with the condition of your brake shoes. Uh, so you want to have a good look over them and make sure there's plenty of meat left on the, uh, on the shoes themselves. 
and uh, make sure that all of the uh, components look healthy and uh, if not you may want to um, dismount them and um, re-grease them and refit them or obviously if they are worn you're going to have to replace the brake shoes now if you need any help with doing anything to do with the brake shoes before you move on and fit your disc uh, we're filming a full uh, brake shoe replacement video we'll add a link for it uh, in the descriptive text below this video so you can go down and uh, check that out if you get stuck but always be sure to check these out because now's the time to replace them uh, if they need replacing a good idea just before we stick this uh, new disc on is just to give this uh, face a bit of a clean up. Use your wire uh, brush to clean the face and clean these little edges in here as well. And then grab your uh, brake cleaner and uh, just give them a bit of a spray off. And what we're going to do is actually gonna put some uh, copper grease uh, on the face here and that will stop, that will help ensure um, that the um, disc doesn't bind in the future to the, uh, to the hub. Okay, so I'm just grabbing a little bit of the copper grease. I'm just going to apply a thin layer to it, just across the whole of the face. Don't want it onto there too thick. Uh, try not to get it inside the uh, threads of the wheel bolts, and make sure you get it on these uh, on the faces of these three little uh, guides just here as well. So just carry on and do that. Just like I said, just a nice thin layer, just covering the whole of the face. So when it comes to uh, brake discs, uh, they almost always come vacuum sealed, uh, like this one. And uh, inside here, they actually coat this with a uh, thin layer of grease. The reason that they do that is to keep it nice and shiny in the packet. Uh, you don't want to open your brand new box and find a uh, brake disc with a uh, surface rust on it. So they cover it all with a fine mist of grease. And you obviously want to get rid of that because your um, brake pads are actually slightly absorbent. So if they've got grease on it, they'll actually soak that grease into the faces and, it, and obviously that's going to have uh, disastrous consequences. So you need to get brake cleaner and give the complete face of your, both faces, front and back, of your um, brake disc a really good clean. And also because these have the inline shoes, we want to make sure that we're going to clean on the inside up in, in there where the brake shoes are going to make contact as well. So we want to make sure we clean all of the faces on both sides. see it gives you an idea of how much uh, grease they put on these. It's always a good idea to do the outside first uh, because this bit it doesn't matter whether you get a little bit of grease on that. In actual fact we'll probably grease that before we uh, put the wheel back on with some copper slip. So when you turn it over there might be a little bit of uh, grease in there but this will keep this surface that we've just cleaned up off of that grease. You see on this side, I don't know whether it will show up on the uh, video or not, you can really see the grease uh, kind of shining in the uh, in the light there. So you want to make sure you've got a wheel bolt uh, to hand. And when you come to line up your disc, what you've got to remember is the, uh, the larger of the two holes. The small one is your um, little viewing window, if you like, and the larger one is uh, what uh, is the screw, the torque screw that holds it onto the hub. So when you bring up your disc, we can see you've got the two holes. This is obviously the larger one, and that's the little inspection one there. So we want to make sure that this one gets lined up with this hole here. Let's be careful of your shoes. And factory spec on this is 14 newton meters, which is so so small you wouldn't bother doing that with a torque wrench. It's basically snug, but you're not cranking on the uh, on the wrench. Okay, and then what I'm going to do at this stage, I'm actually going to put a second wheel bolt in. This, this will allow us to um, manipulate the turning of the uh, wheel if it's a little bit uh, tricky. 
So as you can see that is the disc essentially fitted, however you can't just chuck your caliper back on and chuck your wheel on and go driving off down the road because we haven't actually set the adjustment for your uh, parking brake. So at the moment you remember we've uh, turned that cog all the way down so that that circle in there is at its smallest possible um, point. So when the handbrake is applied it will likely barely actually apply the handbrake. So what we need to do is follow a little process now to actually uh, adjust the handbrake to the correct position. Now to allow us to do that we're going to use our little inspection window and the little inspection window looks a little bit further than the uh, than the hub. So when you when you look in there yourself, you'll see you can just see this this corner, you know, like the little corner of the hub. Obviously, the wheel ones are in the middle of the hub. This one's further out. So what we need to do is turn this around because we know because we've just put it back together that our little um, cog for us is on the nine o'clock position on the right hand side here. So we're going to spin this around, get that in the right place, and then we need to look in there and look for those little lines so that we know we're in alignment with that cog. Okay, so your, uh, your uh, disc should spin fairly freely. I can do that by hand, no real dramas or problems there. That's what you want at this stage. Now, if you're feeling a lot of resistance at this stage, uh, then that could be indicative of an issue. You shouldn't really have much resistance at all. So we're just going to look that, uh, look, look in there now with the torch and just make sure we're lined up and then we'll do the adjustment. Okay, so I can now see the cogs. I'm in perfect alignment just there. I'm happy. So you recall I wrote it down earlier. Moving the tip of my screwdriver towards the back of the car makes the uh, assembly get larger, which is what we want. So what we're going to do now is we're going to adjust this until we uh, feel it start to get tight. And you want to adjust it to a point where you can't move this by hand anymore. Uh, so let's start the process. So you want to put that in. Just feel, feel for the little kind of notches and then one notch at a time okay so I can feel that getting tight there now it's actually resisting me when I want to turn it so now I'm going to try the uh, manual uh, spin on this <coughs> yeah so I can, I can barely move that by hand I might see if I can get another little half a half of one out of it. There we go. Yeah, yeah, so that's now uh, fully locked. Uh, you can't move that by hand. Now you may need to check uh, for your specific uh, maker model, uh, but on the Audi Q7, what we actually need to do is rewind it by six um, adjustments. So we again, we know that moving that screwdriver towards the rear of the car makes that get bigger. So now we're going to do the opposite of that. We're going to move my screwdriver towards the front of the car, and we're going to move that little cog six increments. So we've done six, so hopefully this should be fairly free again. Yes, it is. So our next uh, step now is to ensure um, that when we uh, apply the handbrake cable that it does actually lock this back in position. Those are six, um, moving back by six clicks, that's the correct uh, amount of distance uh, that's needed so that when you um, compress the, uh, the pedal for the handbrake, uh, the cable will move by X, X amount, which will move these by X amount, and it happens to be uh, six clicks as per the Audi workshop manual. But once we've uh, done this, before we go ahead and start putting this back together, we're going to apply the, the, uh, the handbrake, the parking brake, and just double check that it is doing what we need it to do. And we're going to have that little bit of a uh, movement uh, as your um, uh, drive shaft twisting backwards and forwards, uh, prop shaft, sorry, and then yeah, there's nothing there at all. Yeah, there is. Yeah, no, definitely can't move that. Uh, so that's an indication that we've got a good uh, solid lock on the parking brake. Now, when yeah, you perform this uh, test, uh, if you, you know you might be using the uh, original handbrake shoes rather than fitting brand new ones like uh, like we have and obviously your old ones uh, will be worn uh, but it should still be um, six clicks back 
but if when you do this test you're finding that you can still uh, physically move it then what you can do of course is adjust this and make it a little bit you know maybe put it back um, two so it gets uh, two clicks wider and then repeat the process again but you should be able to move it quite freely uh, when the handbrake is released but then you shouldn't be able to uh, move it you know really um, it'll take a heck of a lot of effort to move it shouldn't be able to move it at all uh, by hand uh, when it's locked in so if you need to uh, make adjustments remember you can do that and now's the time to uh, do it before you uh, start to reassemble everything and just for ease we're now going to uh, disengage the, uh, the parking brake um, so that we can go ahead and start um, assembling the rest of the components. So now just uh, refit the little uh, screw for the inspection cover. And again, this is meant to be 14 newton meters. Don't over tighten this, especially as it's a little small spline. That's plenty. So it's a good idea before you uh, refit your uh, caliper just to give it a quick once over, get rid of any little um, bits of debris, build up of dirt etc uh, and also if you want to you can put a bit of a brake cleaner on there. Uh, be careful with the brake cleaner especially around these little um, uh, rubber gaskets that sit around the pistons. Brake cleaner can be quite aggressive on uh, on rubber so just be a little bit careful with that. Just give them a bit of a general tidy up, make sure you're happy before we refit. Okay, now as per the uh, Audi VW Workshop manual, uh, it's always a good idea to replace these. Uh, it, it says that you have to do it every single time you uh, do a brake um, disc change, i.e. the caliper gets removed from the car. Uh, it's a good idea on these, uh, especially as they're a 12 point. Uh, I'm not a big fan of these 12 point ones. They can, of all the types that it could be, these are ones that will round out the easiest if you get some bad corrosion inside. Much better as just a standard traditional hex uh, so, yeah, it's especially important because these could potentially round out that you do get the new ones. The new ones aren't that expensive, probably looking uh, five, six, seven pounds per bolt, about the same amount in, in dollars. We'll put the uh, part number for the uh, official bolt for the uh, Audi Q7 with the rear Brembos uh, on there, so you can uh, reference that if you need to. But always worth remembering, as per the workshop manual, replace these whenever possible. And one final thing is just to check that the uh, surfaces where the um, uh, caliper bolts onto the bracket is nice and clean and flat, and you want to do that on both the uh, caliper side and on the uh, vehicle side. Just have a good feel around, make sure there's no dirt in there, you don't want anything getting trapped in the gap in between them. So take the weight of the caliper, just remove this cable tie. Bring the caliper over and you're looking to align. There we go. Looking to align the top uh, bolt hole with the, uh, with the hub so we can get the first bolt started. Now you're going to grab your uh, torque wrench and those two bolts need to be torqued up to the correct spec which is 180 newton meters. Okay so next we're going to talk about the uh, brake pads. A uh, couple of things that we've uh, done is we've had to buy these separately. We've got a brand new uh, pin and a clip uh, because the old one wasn't in the best shape. Probably would have cleaned up, it's only a metal pin but and these definitely weren't in a good in good shape so we've got a brand new pair of the uh, uh, clips one for this side one for the other and additionally we've had to uh, get hold of the uh, wear sensors now when you buy your pads uh, these ones uh, only come with the uh, with the pads they don't come with any extras sometimes uh, when you buy these uh, they will come with various components. Sometimes you might get these with them, you won't get that with it. Sometimes you get these with them, and sometimes you can even get the wear sensors included with them as well. So when you're shopping around for your brake pads, always having a look at the various different options, because you might be able to pay an extra, you know, uh, four or five pounds, six, seven dollars uh, up front and get one that has all this stuff with it, and that's a lot cheaper than trying to buy it separately later. So just bear that in mind when you're choosing your pads. So for your brake pads, Let's just open these up real quick. Okay, it's got 
got one pair for this side, one pair for the other side. Now I've already rewound the uh, caliper earlier in the uh, in the process, uh, pushed the pistons back, uh, so in theory we should have enough uh, space to uh, to fit the new pads into. When you're handling the uh, brake pads, remember that the uh, faces of these uh, are slightly absorbent, so you don't want to get any of your grease onto the face of these pads because that will soak in. You can't just wipe it off. Uh, so that's very very important. Always uh, be careful of that. Uh, so what we're going to do now is look at the, uh, the process of uh, popping these back in. So just a quick note for when you connect your wear sensors later on. If you have a look at the pad, they actually have a uh, little um, kind of ridge that's raised on the pad side, and that's to uh, kind of stop you fitting them in uh, the wrong way, if that makes any sense. So you'll find that they actually only actually fit in in the one way. So they fit in that way, and if you try and put them in the wrong way around, you won't actually be able to get them in. So that's uh, something to bear in mind, and literally when you come to do these, you just push them down. You see it's got a little barb on it, and that will just click into place. So it's always a good idea when you're uh, fitting the pads, uh, just to help them out a little bit. They do normally have these little um, uh, backing plates on them, so they're much better than they uh, used to be years ago. Uh, but it's still a good idea when the uh, pistons actually touch the back of the pad, just to get a little uh, thin layer of your uh, brake grease, uh, or you can use copper uh, copper grease called, called anti seize. Uh, that's the kind of more traditional product. Just a little thin layer like that. And that will help you not only get them in, but that will help uh, things to stop binding to the rear of the pads. Additionally, you'll notice when you look down into the caliper, there's uh, metal pins in there, and that's where these sit. These butt up against these little metal pins. So again you don't want to get this on the face of the pad but just where it sits just there again that will just help that to stop binding and give it a little bit of a lubrication for your installation so now I just want to slot the uh, pads into uh, into place and the opposite side Exactly the same. So next we've got our brand new uh, spring clip and then we're going to put that in place. The little um, kind of bracket for your wire that goes at the bottom and then you're going to take your um, your pin and you can feed that in from this side. I'm just going to put a little bit of um, uh, grease on this just to help lubricate it as it passes through. You'll find you've got to compress these springs quite a lot by hand. There we go, to get them started. Also, they've got a little ridge on them. Kind of got to do it twice. There we go. That's nice. It's actually just ended up with the hole facing in the right uh, position. As you can see there, I was ready to put my uh, clip in. It needs to be so you can kind of see the hole. If the hole were here and here, you're going to have to uh, pop it back, turn it a little bit and push it back through. So I, I got lucky on that one. It's going to give it one little tap with the uh, hammer just to make sure it is fully inserted and I'll pop that clip in. So for your wear pad sensor, start on the, uh, the end, uh, which is furthest from your electrical plug, and this is going to be your outside one just here. Remember that they only fit uh, in one way, so the kind of the fatter side should be in towards the uh, face of the um, uh, pad, in towards the uh, disc there. Sure that's properly seated that feels good then we'll look at the other end so next just this tuck that up where that's going to be remember the uh, thick side in towards the uh, pad my screwdriver Again, make sure it's properly seated. It feels good down there. And then the uh, cable that joins the two, I'm just going to hook that up into this little um, bracket just there. 
So next, go around to the uh, back. Remember, you've got this uh, this uh, speed sensor cable just there. And we need to uh, pop that back into the little bracket on the uh, caliper there. So next, take your electrical connector and uh, making sure we've got it around the right way. Can be quite tricky because of the uh, little metal bracket. There it is. So it's inside the metal bracket. Push it up till hopefully it'll click. Yeah, a little click there. Pull it back. Make sure it's in there tight. Yeah, we're secure. Finally, remember we've got this little slot just in here uh, for taking uh, this uh, cable just here. Uh, this is an aftermarket wear sensor, and the uh, rubber's quite thick on this, so it might be quite tricky to get this into this slot. Uh, but we'll uh, we'll persevere with it. That's the brake job completed. Obviously, you need to uh, put your uh, wheels back on to make sure you, t you torque up the uh, wheel nuts to the uh, correct spec. And, but before you get on your car, before you hop in your car and shoot down the motorway at uh, 70 miles an hour, uh, what you should do is uh, test those brakes. And you should do that just on the driveway outside your own house. Just roll backwards and forwards a few times. Make sure those brakes have, that feel good. Make sure they're uh, pinching as they should. They feel correct and then take it on a little short drive just around the block. Again, just testing those brakes, keeping an eye on them, making sure you're 100% happy before you go shooting down the highway or the motorway at full speed. And just a quick tip for you before you put the uh, wheel back onto the car, what you can do is you can actually take some of your copper uh, anti-seize, uh, copper grease, and uh, you put a very light coating of it uh, on this face here, obviously not on the uh, face of the uh, of the actual braking surface of the, of the disc or the rotor, on this inner surface here. This is where the, uh, the rear of the wheel actually clamps when you put the wheel bolts on. It pulls the uh, rear of your wheel uh, tight in against uh, against this. And uh, what can happen over time is you can get a little bit of um, moisture in there, a little bit of corrosion in there. And it's possible to get your wheel so that it's stuck. And if you've ever had a wheel that's stuck, they can be an absolute nightmare to, uh, to get off. Uh, we've had wheels uh, that have taken literally 20 to 30 minutes to get off and it's not a lot of fun. That being said, Audis and VWs don't suffer from this very badly at all, uh, but this is an extra little step you can do so the next time, next time you remove your wheel, this will help that possibility of it binding and will make definitely make it much easier next time. So what you're looking to do is just put a, a thin layer really doesn't have to be very thick at all all over this uh, surface here so you want to carry that on until you've literally covered the whole of that surface and then in addition to that very important you want to get these bits here because this is the other place where the wheels can uh, stick sometimes it's a solid circle in this uh, particular instance on this q7 here uh, it's kind of broken down into three smaller sections rather than one big circle. Uh, that's the other place you want to get a little air of that grease and that will really help prevent it. So carry that process on and do this the whole of the uh, face just with a very light uh, thin coating, as thin as you can get it. So there we go guys, that is the new disc and your pads fitted to the rear of the vehicle fitted with the Brembo caliper. This video has been helpful for you. Uh, we always ask a little favour in return. Can you at least, before you leave us, be sure to hit that like button. If you could also hit that subscribe button, that really helps our channel out. Be sure to check out our channel. We've got literally hundreds more uh, Audi DIY instructional videos waiting for you to uh, view at your pleasure there. And also be sure to take a look at our website, totaltechnic.com, uh, where you can browse through that video. It's a little bit easier than it is uh, on the YouTube channel. Really appreciate you watching, guys, and we'll see you again in the future.